revised ballot law states that an observer with his back to the wind as a center of low pressure on his left in the northern hemisphere and on his right in the southern hemisphere. That's it. That's buys ballot law. Where's that come from? Right here. The bowditch. The bookage. Buys ballot was a Dutch meteorologist. He was the man. He was a practitioner. That's why his back was to the wind. Because he's out there in a rotating tropical storm taking cover back to the wind. Saying, center of low pressure is to the left because we're in the northern hemisphere. That makes sense to me. You'll see an argument. No, no, no. You have to face the wind and then it's to your right and behind you. Well, it's all the same thing. Whether you face the wind and it's to your right and behind you or whether your back is to the wind, it's to your left and a little bit in front of you, states the same thing. So, buys ballot law, once again, right from the Bowditch, says this. According to buys ballot law, an observer whose back is to the wind has the low pressure on his left in the northern hemisphere and on his right in the southern hemisphere. That's buys ballot law. Why is it important? Once you know where you are relative to the center of the low pressure, you can avoid it. That's important. Imagine there was a huge sea monster, like a kraken, right? It wants to eat you and destroy you. It would be convenient to know where that kraken is, right? Well, that kraken is the center of low pressure. So if we know where we are relative to the low pressure, we could start tracking it and avoid it. Before we start tracking the storm, we need to become familiar with a couple terms. Track, path, dangerous side, and navigable side. Let's look at those. Here's the low pressure. Here's the wind on one side. Here's the general wind on the other side. The track of the low pressure is the past. Where was this? We know where this was because we tracked it in the past. So what is the path? The path of this low pressure is the future. The path is the future. The future predicted path. So we got the track in the past. The path is in the future where we predict it's going to go. And now there's two sides to this circle here. There's the dangerous side and the navigable side. The dangerous side has wind velocities adding to the velocity of the storm in general. So the whole low pressure system has a velocity this way, right? This velocity adds to wind speed on the dangerous side. Wind plus velocity of storm, higher winds, higher waves on the dangerous side. The most dangerous part of this hurricane is like right here. You don't want to be in here. The navigable side. On the navigable side, you have wind directions this way, right? This wind direction is opposite to the velocity of the storm. So you have wind minus velocity, less waves, less wind. It's still very dangerous, but it's said to be the navigable side. Now that we're familiar with these terms, we can start to track the storm and figure out if we're on the dangerous side or the navigable side and then take action accordingly. Let's track this wind and figure out what side of the storm we're on. Here's a low pressure system again. Rotating tropical storm, aka hurricane, in the northern hemisphere over by the U.S. And now we apply Bayes ballot law and we say back to the wind, center of low to the left. And now we know approximately where the low is. We need to track it. Is the wind shifting to the right, which is veering, means you're on the dangerous side? Or is the wind shifting to the left, which is backing, and you're on the navigable side? So let's set up two scenarios. One, you're on the dangerous side, and the other, you're on the navigable side. Let's start with one, danger. So you are here. In this case, we get this wind, this wind, and then this wind as that proceeds by. So you can say this wind, this wind, and then this wind, right? Boom, boom, boom. What is that doing? See it shifting to the right? This is a right shift. Right shift equals veering wind equals danger. A right shift is veering wind means you're on the dangerous side of this storm. Let's look at scenario two. In scenario two, you're located here and this low pressure is moving past. You get this wind, this wind, and then this wind, right? This wind, this wind, this wind. So you're going, you're rotating 
left. This is a left shift. Left shift equals backing wind equals navigable side of the storm. Good. Now we have a way of determining are we on the dangerous side of that storm or the navigable side of that storm? So what do we do once we have this information? Check this diagram out from the reading. It lays out how you maneuver to avoid the center of a low pressure. Let's draw it. Okay, here's the low pressure with the wind coming into the middle. Track, path, dangerous side, navigable side. If you find yourself on the dangerous side, you wanna put the wind one to four points off your starboard bow and make as much way as you can, like this. And as the storm passes, your course will actually curve and you'll be taken away from the path at the center of the low. If you find yourself on the navigable side, you put your starboard quarter two points off the wind and make as much way as possible. That gets you going this way. How far is a point? What is one point off the wind? One point equals 11.25 degrees. And just for a reference, that means four points equals 45 degrees. Okay, so two points is 22.5 degrees off the wind. One to four points is 11.25 to 45 degrees off the wind. So on the dangerous side, put your starboard bow and head this way. On the navigable side, put your starboard quarter and head this way. And as this low passes, it'll curve. Dangerous side, one to four points off starboard bow. Navigable side, two points off starboard quarter. And that's how you avoid the center of a low pressure system. These principles are most relevant when you're crossing a long distance and there's a low pressure coming. There's no, you can't just go back to land. You have to maneuver around a low pressure system or you find yourself being overtaken by a low pressure system. These principles can come into play to help keep you safe. For you, what's practical for you at this point? There are questions about buys ballot. Let's check them out. There's practice questions. You'll notice these in the course. Let's solve a couple of them so you know what to expect on the quiz coming up. Practice problem one says, according to Bayes ballot law, an observer in the northern hemisphere who experiences a northeast wind has a center of low pressure to the east, southeast, south, or southwest. Let's check it out. So we know how to find the center of a low pressure system. Back to the wind, to your left. That's how we're gonna do it. So the first problem says the wind's coming from the northeast. It's really helpful if you draw a compass with yourself at the middle. This is north, east, south, west. And in this case, in problem one, they're saying a northeast wind, right? So we got north and east. Northeast winds come from this way. Put your back to it and it's to your left. So this is showing us southeast. And yes, that is the correct answer, southeast. Let's go on to number two. According to Bayes ballot law, an observer in the northern hemisphere who experiences a southeast wind has a center of low pressure where? Okay, draw our little diagram. North, east, south, west, we're at the middle. And the wind is coming from the southeast. East, south, it's coming from the southeast. We put our back to it and it's over to the left. It's over here, what's that? Southwest, so we name it Southwest. That's the center of the low, let's see. Yeah, Southwest. Number three, according to Bayes ballot law, an observer in the Northern Hemisphere who experiences a south wind. So, south wind, where's the low pressure? Again, north, east, south, west. They say it, a south wind, put your back to it, to your left. So over here, we have a west. The center of the low is over here, to the west. Let's check, that is correct. There's two more of these for you to do on your own. I encourage you to draw the diagram when solving these, just so you don't get mixed up and make a silly mistake. Good luck on this stuff and study hard.